Hello friends, this video on basic concepts of chemistry part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 5. So mass of a substance is nothing but the amount of matter present in it. It is the amount of matter present in it. And the weight is nothing but the force. Weight is nothing but a force. Please note, weight is a force exerted by gravity on an object which has some mass. Because weight is nothing but mass into gravity. You must have learned this in physics, right? So if your mass is in kg and gravity is in meter per second square, because that's the force, so your weight comes out to be uh, mass into uh, distance meter uh, per second square, something like this. So I'll tell you, if this is in kg, this guy is in meter per second square, so your weight will be kg meter per second square. And this guy is a force actually, weight is nothing but a force. And that's why you see, the mass of a substance is constant anywhere. You go anywhere, you go to moon, you go to earth, you go to equator, it doesn't matter. You go to any place, the mass is constant because mass is nothing but the amount of matter that is present in a substance. But if you talk about weight, weight is vary because weight is nothing but mass into gravity and this guy mass is constant but this guy, this keeps varying. If you, if the gravity in the moon and gravity in the earth is different. That, that, that's why the weight varies. And to measure the mass of a substance, we can use this kind of instrument called analytical balance. Or you can also use this this kind of balance. You must have seen in a vegetable shop where they put a kg here and you put uh, vegetables here, right? And they weigh. These kind of instruments can be used to measure mass of a substance. Please note, mass is constant. For a given substance, you go anywhere, the mass is the same. Weight is nothing but a force exerted by gravity on that particular object which has a mass. And the value is m into g, which you have learned in physics. Weight is mass into gravity. And that keeps changing based on the value of g. We'll talk about volume. Volume has the unit length q. In so SI unit, it will be meter cube because for length, my SI unit is meter. So, the SI unit of volume has to be meter cube. Please note, the SI unit of volume is not liter, which we generally use in our day-to-day -day life, but it is meter. Please note, liter is a common unit, but it is not a SI unit. The common unit is liter, but it is not a SI unit. Please note, once again, liter is not a SI unit. It is a common unit. And one liter is nothing but 1000 ml. And there is a, there is a uh, relation between liter and meter also. We will explain that. Before that, let's understand how do you measure volume. So in the lab, we generally use this, these uh, instruments. This is called Buret, we use pipette, we use uh, volumetric flask, this guy, and we also use graduated cylinders. These instruments we generally use to measure volume of any liquid. Please note, volume of any liquid. We generally find volume of liquid or gas also, correct? And the SI unit is in meter, meter cube, but the common unit is liter. As I told, we have this uh, standards of measurements and it is stored somewhere and we have a base saying that one meter is nothing but distance traveled by light in particular fraction of seconds. Those kind of things we have, right? So, but we should store the base somewhere. As I told, for weight, one kg, there's a base defined by uh, this international organization that is considered to be one unit. So it has to be stored somewhere and it is stored in almost all the developed countries or developing countries. So each country has this National Metallurgy Institute to store these uh, standards of measurement. For India, it is a National Physical Laboratory that is uh, in New Delhi. And this guy is uh, used to, this guy, this National Physical Laboratory, this guy's job is to store the, the preserve it and also derive better ways of uh, uh, finding the standards, right? So that's how it is, no? they, they do experiments to realize the better way of finding the base units because it may happen that the base unit which we consider it may change over time. So they always try to find a better way of uh, defining this standard units and also preserving the existing ones. Right? Because also these standards, they periodically they compare with the other one in the other countries. For example, the one in India may be compared with the one in France and they'll see if things are same. If, if there's a difference, they'll raise the issue and try to do something. Also, they have, the, the head of this is 
stored somewhere in uh, Paris and they also compare I mean to say the National Metrology Institute in Delhi the National Physical Laboratory in Delhi also compares these units with the one in Paris. Now we'll talk about density. Density of substance as we all know is nothing but mass per unit volume. So that is called density. Since I am telling it is mass per unit, so mass for mass SI unit is kg and for volume the SI unit is meter cube. So the SI unit of density will be kg per meter cube. Please note it will be kg per meter cube because the SI unit of mass is kg and the SI unit of volume is meter cube. So the SI unit of density will be kg per meter cube. If we talk about temperature, there are three common scales for temperature that is used that is degree Celsius, degree Fahrenheit and Kelvin and please note Kelvin is the SI unit out of these two. Degree Celsius and degree Fahrenheit which you commonly use are not the SI unit. Kelvin is the SI unit and the formula we have to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius is Fahrenheit is 9 by 5 into C plus 3 and Kelvin is you have a C in degree Celsius you add 273.1 and please note temperature below 0 degree Celsius negative values are possible in Celsius scale but it is not possible in Kelvin scale. For Kelvin it has to start with 0 and that's the reason why we cho choose the Kelvin scale because in Kelvin scale we don't have a negative. So if you say minus 15 Kelvin that is not a valid temperature. The minimum it can have is 0 Kelvin. Correct? And that's why you see but in Celsius you can have minus 40 degrees Celsius. But in Kelvin it, it this is possible but in Kelvin it is not possible. For Kelvin the base is uh, 0. For example if you see the Kelvin it starts like this 0 is 273 Kelvin so that's why the if it's zero, it is extreme minus. It can't go negative. But in Celsius, it can go to the negative. And Fahrenheit is 32. This guy is zero, and this guy is 273, the starting point. And for 100 degrees Celsius, this guy is 100 degrees Celsius. This guy is 2.2, and this is 373. This is the scale. Uh, the point is same. The only thing is the scales are different to measure temperature. And please note, Kelvin is a SI unit. As I told this international organization has uh, all these standards defined for example for length 1 meter they say that the light uh, distance travel with light path, path in these milliseconds. So they have all these uh, uh, meter, meter uh, Kelvin everything is defined and all the other uh, devices which we have the measuring device we calibrate or standardized against these reference. So for example if you see the mass as I told this was defined in 1889 right. So it is defined as nothing but the mass of platinum iridium cylinder that is stored in an airtight jar at this International Bureau of Weights and Measures in France and this guy was chosen for standard because it is resistant to chemical attack. For example if they choose that suppose sodium it may burn right so those things will change for example you, you, you have some mass of sodium and you put somewhere it may burn. Then you lose a standard, right? So that's why what they have done. They have taken this platinum iridium cylinder because this guy is uh, very much uh, strong and it is resistant to attack. So if you keep this guy for maybe 50 years, 60 years also, or 1000 years also, that will not change because it will not react. For example, if you take 1 kg of iron and you put somewhere, maybe after 100 years, this uh, iron will corrode and the value will change but they don't want to change because these are the standards right all the other measuring instruments around the globe are using the standard so they look for something which is very much reliable that doesn't change over a long period of time so for the 1 kg they use platinum iridium uh, cylinder for meter also if you see earlier what they did was earlier they had this again this uh, platinum iridium bar they they had they stored this at 0 degrees celsius and they, they defined that this guy is the unit of 1 meter. They changed it because again this guy was a little reli not reliable. So in 1960 they have changed it and they told that these times is 10 to the power 6 times the wavelength of the light emitted by Krypton laser. That is what they defined the meter to be. Again they changed it in 1983 because they didn't find this guy also much reliable. So this guy changed this guy as nothing but the distance traveled by light in vacuum in these many seconds. So if you see they keep changing the definition of 
meter, the definition of meter changed. One, to start with, they had this platinum iridium bar, right? Then they change it to the uh, uh, wavelength of this uh, krypton laser, and then again change, they change it to the distance traveled by light in some seconds. So thus, if you see the reference standards keep changing, and that is the work of this international bureau to find the best standard. So this bar may change, would have changed maybe, and that's why they have changed the scenario. Also, if you see uh, when they told tell that there is a platinum bar, they have to actually to replicate this. You have to again go and uh, uh, take this bar and again copy it. But if you tell that the definition is like this, you take a, a light, uh, you find the distance of the light in this many seconds. Even if you don't have any base, you can still find this distance in a lab because you have this light, so light available every, everywhere, right? So you can just find the distance travel and that becomes one meter. So those kind of things they change so that they make sure that even if this guy is lost, this guy is lost, you can also again find the value of one meter if you know the formula. So in this case, if you see, if you lose this, you're not able to find one meter again. But if you lose this form, uh, lose, I mean, you don't have anything to lose also in this case, anytime you can find the value of length because the light is available. They keep changing the base. And thus, if you see, similar to length and mass, they have reference standard for other physical quantities also, which we will not discuss, but just understand that the job of this bureau is to find the best way to get the standard and to define and store it also. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.